And then I switched to a little bit smaller gouge. You don't want to shove the gouge in too far, otherwise it's going to catch. Okay. And that's pretty much going to be the, the shape of this uh, ring holder. Okay, at this point, nor what I normally do is, is sand the piece. And uh, it's something like this, I'd start with about 180 grit and work my way up to at least 400 or maybe 600 grit. I'll also slow the lathe down, the rotation of the lathe, and I will adjust the belt for that. Close up my cover again. And uh, start sanding. Now, there's nothing magical about what I'm, how I sand, but I will use my little foot pedal to slow things down a little bit. That fits good, nice and snug. A little bit of glue will hold it right in, and uh, there you have a ring holder once it's finished. Now here you can see how the tool bounces because it's not down to a cylinder yet. Now I'm going to move the tool rest a little bit closer. And as soon as I get the excess off of here, we'll just part it off, friction fit it, and we'll finish the bottom and that'll be the end of the piece. Slow it down just a little bit. And there you have that. Shut off the lathe. Pop it off. And you have a confetti oil lamp. I generally make my boxes out of uh, maple burl, and the first thing I need to do is to turn the whole thing down to a cylinder, and we're doing that now. After I do that, I'll true up the top, and then I'll part off what's, gonna be, what's going to be the lid. The pencil lines just allow me to recenter the lid after I've parted it off on the main body of the box. Now remove the tail center. And this will be the inside of the box, this will be the inside of the lid. Now what you don't want to do is remove too much material from the top because you want the top to match up as well as you can with the lid. So I'm just going to get a rough shape of this. I want to leave as much mass as I can at the bottom of this, but still get an idea of the finished shape. I should probably mention again, this is, uh, I'm using a small bowl gouge in this, but there's absolutely no reason why a spindle gouge wouldn't work. Just keep on refining this shape. Okay, now just kind of look at your shape. Now I'm going to go back to the base of it a little bit. The uh, parts on, it just kind of length lengthens it out and, and just makes it look uh, a little bit more elegant. So we'll use a little super glue here. It's just on the cardboard. And I'll put that piece in. And the next piece we'll put in is the perch. Just takes a little bit of the glue, too much, and it squirts out. And it starts to look a little more interesting. And this is one that's a little loose fitting, so I'm going to get a little extra glue in there. And I'll also hold it in place so you can see it. And the final thing is the little uh, brass eye pin. And I just get a little extra glue on there, 
And once that dries, it's your completed ornament. Now my Christmas tree ornaments, I turned to a finished diameter of about two and a quarter. We'll take a little bit more out of that. As long as you're close, it's fine. And see how it fits. That's a perfect fit. Sometimes when I set up my booth at a craft show, I'll, I'll look at my display and I'll, I'll wonder, uh, do I have too much, uh, too much of a variety, too much of a range of work from you know, very inexpensive things like bottle stoppers up to you know, more expensive platters and that kind of thing. Uh, and I look at other craftspeople and I see some of them are very, very focused on what they do. Uh, they do specifically little hollow forms or large hollow forms or, or bowls or whatever. And uh, here I am with, uh, you know, keychains and ring holders, uh, weed pots, uh, lidded boxes. Uh, sometimes I wonder if people are looking at me and say, does this guy know what he's doing? But on the other hand, I've had people come in and uh, look at the booth and just say, oh, this is wonderful, uh, particularly the idea that they can you know, they can get, they can just spend ten dollars and uh, go home with a little piece of, of something that you made and and, uh, and did as, as good a job as you can on. I always tell people when we're uh, when we're working to to enjoy the cut. I see a lot of people trying to hog out a lot of material fast, but I always try and push the idea of of making a making a clean cut that has nice shavings and that kind of thing. Uh, getting the best cut you can from the from the tool. And, and, and you know, enjoy the, the process of what you're doing.